Hi everyone and welcome to your horoscope for the week of January the 3rd, 2022. First of all, I would like to wish everyone a very happy, magical, blessed and miraculous new year. I know that 2021 was really a difficult, challenging, chaotic, extremely unstable, you know, up and down, high and low, sometimes at the same time kind of year, where it almost drove many of us into insanity, but at the same time, we truly have to appreciate all the breakthroughs, regardless if they're just psychological breakthroughs, spiritual breakthroughs, material breakthroughs, social breakthroughs, it doesn't matter in which shape or form it manifested in our lives. But, you know, chances are most of us are very, very different people with very different mindset, way of thinking, and even worldview than we were at the very beginning of 2021. Even though for many of us, this breakthrough and this push forward did manifest in a rather uncomfortable extremely anxious, challenging in so many ways, yet it truly has done the job. And this theme continues even in 2022, but it's going to be a totally different setup. This is where we are heading into the construction phase of this massive role change, of this massive pivotal moment, the turning of paradigms. So yes, of course, the instability, the chaos, the up and down, the du- the very, very strong duality is going to stay with us, but it is going to operate differently, where of course Pluto in the sign of Capricorn and Uranus in Taurus will continue the destruction, deconstruction, revealing of the corruption of the old order, old paradigm, etc., But at the same time, this is the year when we will very, very seriously start rebuilding and advancing. And that is something that can genuinely give all of us hope because this will manifest both globally on the world stage, but also in our individual life stories. And Jupiter freshly entered into the sign of Pisces is definitely going to be our greatest ally. Even after it leaves Pisces in May and enters the sign of Aries, even that energy is extremely important. It is very, very different than in Pisces, but we do need that very, very strong Aries impulse, the first breath being born, in order to step into a new personal paradigm, but at the same time, Jupiter will retrograde back into Pisces and finish at the finishing touches of whatever it has begun. And also, in this year, we will have the meeting of Neptune and Jupiter in their home sign of Pisces, which is a very rare celestial conversation, which not every generation can experience. So everyone alive today is very fortunate to get a glimpse of this energy because this has a lot of potential in so very many ways. Especially the greatest potential is collectively for our species where this is definitely a spiritual quantum leap where our collective consciousness absorbs the divine directive, if that makes sense. And that new divine directive is going to flood us. We are going to be drowning in spirit, so to speak. So if we thought that up until this moment, we had a lot of manifestations of the spirit out there in the world, some quite spectacular, some quite miraculous, some quite astonishing. This is where we haven't seen anything yet, because this meeting of Jupiter and Neptune is going to 
greatly amplify our openness to the spirit, if that makes sense. So that means much more powerful manifestations. And I'm speaking about like collective manifestations for everyone to witness, for everyone to see. Of course, not immediately. This just opens the cycle of the next 12 years where the spirit is truly going to work really, really intensely. Now, I'm not saying that this is good news or bad news. I'm not charging. I'm not polarizing the expression of this energy because it so very much depends on the person, on our set up on our past Pisces, whatever we have done until this moment in our lives, and not necessarily physically or job or whatever, spiritually, psychologically, as in our identity, the person who we are today, well, ultimately it is our creation. Of course, certain things were fated. Of course, we came into this life with a divine identity and with a lot of information and specifics and lessons and abilities and skills that we accumulated throughout our past existences, yet still who we are now today and what we are doing with our lives, with our time, with everything, well, that is mostly our creation. We are the authors of that. So depending on what we created, how we managed to navigate in life and it's so many dimensions, of course, that determined the way our life stories went and how it played out. So that is why what this meeting of Jupiter and Neptune is going to do for us personally depends so much on that. It depends on the past And for some people, it even depends on past existences, because that's also one of the specifics of Piscean energy. So for some people, it can be absolutely miraculous, magical. For other people, it can be like profoundly healing. While for others still, perhaps not so pleasant, because, you know, Pisces is also health. Pisces is also immune system. Pisces is also addiction, escapism of any kind. Pisces is also martyrdom. Pisces is also the undoing of the self and anything that might lead to death. And I do believe that the most darkest side of Pisces is this irresistible, uncontrollable urge for self-victimization and Pisces is a very ethereal, mystical sign. So it doesn't matter what your relation to the divine and spirituality and mysticism or even psychology is. It doesn't even matter how profoundly you know yourself or not. This dark side of Pisces can simply generate a kind of reality each and every day of our lives where we become victims to anything, everyone in any circumstance, and that is a prison. Of course, Pisces also rules prisons and hospitals and mental institutions, so that is the darker side of Pisces. And those people who had this ongoing for many, many years in their lives, me included, for example, well, we either stop this now or we're going to harvest a pretty gruesome reward from the meeting of Jupiter and Neptune. Yet, that is why when Jupiter enters Aries in May, it is going to be very, very important because Aries is the inner warrior. Aries is the initiator. Aries is sovereignty over the self and everything that we have in our lives. So that energy can act like a shock. It can act when someone has his heart attack and their heart is started by the electrical impulse or when someone awakes from coma from that catatonic state, especially for those people who have been drowning all their lives in this self-victimizing 
reality where they generate it without even knowing it. Jupiter's transit in Pisces, the meeting of, with Neptune, and then entering into Aries is really, really good and proficient energy in order to get out of that vicious, diabolic, demonic, personal dimension that we are generating ourselves. We may think that it's the divine, we may think that it's karma, we may think that we're cursed, we may think so very many things, and ultimately it's just us, something inside of us that became a little bit twisted, especially this stems from childhood for most people. And one of the best ways this manifests in someone's reality where nothing ever happens to them. No coincidence, no synchronicity. Life feels like an ice block, a, a total prison. So what I'm saying is that the meeting of Jupiter and Neptune can be very, very hopeful for everyone who is trapped in this karma, in this, as I said earlier, personal dimension, because chances are Jupiter is going to push you one way or another to snap out of it. Now, of course, what does all of this have to do with this week's energy and astrological context? Well, Jupiter just dipped into the sign of Pisces and it's already doing its job and this can truly be felt. Like, for example, around the 27th of December last year, of course, a few days earlier even for many people, Jupiter being at the anoretic degree of Aquarius before it moved into Pisces, it created a lot of anxiety and fear and this sense of urgency. So many people had a really, really anxious Christmas and winter celebration, especially that we also had the Saturn and Uranus square. And Jupiter expanded this, especially mentally. But as soon as it entered into Pisces, this very strong mental anxiety started quieting down and for some people it turned into tears. Jupiter in Pisces, water, cleansing water, purifying water. So tears were blessed. For other people it turned into hope, into peace, into sacred solitude. So usually the most positive expressions of this Neptune. And now, as we head into the first week of 2022, the first celestial conversation that Jupiter holds is a T-square with the nodes of the moon. And this is very, very significant, especially its square with the north node at around one degree of Gemini. The nodes of the moon are going to move out of the Gemini and Sagittarius axis on the 18th or 19th of January 2022. So this is like the last finishing touches of what these nodes in, still in the Gemini Sagittarius axis have to do for us. And the square that Jupiter holds with these, it's almost like delivering a really powerful message to us one way or another of what exactly Jupiter, you know, Jupiter is truth, inner truth. Jupiter is justice as well, divine justice. It is also faith, but the highest octave of non-linear, non-logical knowledge. So spiritual knowledge or inner knowledge, if that makes sense. So especially around the first days of next week, we might get a very direct and powerful karmic message one way or another telling us exactly what we need to do or maybe an advice or a warning or, you know, anything that can help us personally. And this can come through as a song, another person, even a total stranger saying something, but we can actually tell that their words are divinely inspired and it means something very, very significant to us. 
Of course, you know, any synchronicity, car plate numbers, a sentence on an advert, anything that can speak to us very, very deeply. But this isn't the typical kind of synchronicity where you look at it and all oh, the universe is messaging me how nice. This is where it hits home. This is almost like an arrow being shot straight into your heart where you know that the universe is speaking to you directly. And of course, dreams and anything that has to do with altered state of consciousness is a perfect tool for this Jupiter to tell us the message. And as I say, the difference is between this one and any other kind of synchronicity or Neptunian or mercurial activity that we have playing out in our lives is that we are going to feel it so strongly. The truth of it or the advice of it, whatever the universe tells us, well, it's going to revertebrate in our beings and chances are we're going to think about it, contemplate for days to come. And I can give you such a wonderful personal example how this manifested in my life just yesterday. Even though I hate speaking about myself, this is like spot on. In this December, I had a weird thing going on where my cards or anything did not respond to me whenever I asked any personal question as in regarding myself, my life, my story, etc. It was totally blank. And I had this very strong sensation that my own future is absolutely... Bl I'm blind to it. I cannot see it. And then there comes the question, why? What is going to happen? Because physical reality is not permissive of anything to happen to me, to be totally honest with you. So I asked the universe, come on, man, guide me. If I cannot, if I'm not intelligent enough to decipher this, somehow tell me. And of course, around Christmas, I was taking a walk and on the street next to my flat, I saw tarot cards on the ground, on the floor. And, you know, where I live, that is absolutely impossible. Romania tarot cards. Who in my town uses tarot cards except me? And tarot cards were laid out on the floor. Now, of course, I really didn't like what they were showing because it began with the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is a tarot card. I even tremble when I look at it, even when it's for someone else. So that really, really didn't go down well. And I chose not to interpret them because they didn't show a very clear picture, to be totally honest with you. The Ten of Swords was clear, but the rest was very, very open to 10 million ty types of interpretation. So I asked again, come on, show me, guide me, I, I'm totally blind here. What is happening? And yesterday I was taking a walk. I never ever meet anyone, I don't converse with anyone, but coincidentally my neighbor, who is a lovely primary school teacher, was also taking a walk and we met and we decided to walk together and she told me what she'd done with her class and school and Christmas, New Year's Eve, etc. And she mentioned an experiment, a science experiment, where there is a frog... And if you put the frog into warm water and you start heating the water gradually, little by little, and the frog doesn't run, doesn't escape, it just boils alive. And I never really heard about this science experiment because it's cruel. And she specifically explained to me, well, this is the scientific proof of the Stockholm Syndrome. Where you are, when you're in discomfort, pain, suffering, regardless of which nature, and instead of stopping it, this is the symbolism of the frog, amphibian, perfectly adaptable, Gemini, 
the North Node in Gemini, and Pisces, Jupiter and Pisces, both mutable signs, both adaptable. One is water, the other one is air. The frog can breathe both in water and air. So basically, when the frog gets used to its condition, it won't notice how the water increases the temperature, and by the time it boils, it's too late. So basically, through my neighbor, who has nothing to do with spirituality, the universe kind of told me straight to my face, directly, as clear as possible, either you flee or you're dead. Now, how am I going to do that? That's a totally different question. But at least I know why I'm not seeing my future. And I do believe that in this period, anyone who asks the universe, for this kind of specific guidance, will receive it one way or another. And this is where, you know, they say that you have to trust usually, but in my person, I didn't trust. I was totally lost and confused, and still the message came to me, and it was crystal clear. Not open to interpretation at all. It was telling it straight to my face. So this is one of the most relevant energies at the very beginning of the week. Jupiter squaring the nodes of the moon. This will definitely be an impulse for our sense of direction, but it's a square. For some people like me, it won't be easy or pleasant or beautiful to look at, as in the reality. Yet for other people, it can be like the universe telling them, this year you're going to be rich or promising something really, really big. And the square in that circumstance is that we must not let that get to our heads because we still have to work for it. So that is the outcome. That is the potential. That is where we're heading. But we still need to work for it. And only then embody the joy and the success and the triumph, the bliss, etc., etc., of course, another very hopeful, optimistic, fortunate, lucky, and beautiful celestial conversation is Uranus trining the sun. This is really, really good for professional breakthrough, even career change, finding a job, recognition, professional recognition, reputation, surprising new customers, new business, new opportunities, especially if you have a company of your own, if you embody this Capricornian energy, or it can be a really, really good and inspired idea that will most probably turn into something big, into something like a jackpot. Another really favorable celestial conversation is Mars sextiling Saturn, and i already spoken about this, work, ambition, determination, aiming for the stars, believing in our potential, believing in our chance, believing in our success, and at the same time, taking action and working for it. So belief and this, this optimism, this Sagittarian energy is absolutely wonderful, but this is where also Saturn comes into play, we also need to work. We need to invest time, energy, whatever that is for us personally into it. And only then can it turn into something concrete, something real, and something meant to last for the long term, Saturn in Aquarius. Naturally, we have the Saturn Uranus square all throughout the week, but I already spoken about that a great deal. We already know what that inconveniences, stress, anxiety... People unexpectedly popping up and asking for help, asking for favors, asking for advice. Now, of course, this is inconvenient, this is stressful, this is irritating. But as I said, the evolutionary intent of this square is out with the old and in with the new. And the new can only install itself in our lives if we are pushed out of our comfort zone. So basically, that, that is it both collectively and individually. Now also, all through the week, we are going to be very, very emotional. And each day, 
our emotions might take a totally different dimension, a different nuance, because the moon is going to be holding some very important conjunction with the Capricorn planets, then Aquarian planets, then the Pisces planets. So the energy of the different signs and also the different planets are going to be charging our emotional states. So it's going to be very, very diverse. First, the moon meets with the sun as in today, the 2nd of January, the Capricorn new moon. So don't forget to set an intention for the future. Then the moon meets with Venus retrograde. Then the moon meets with Pluto. Then with Mercury. Then with Saturn. And then it goes into Pisces, where first it meets with Jupiter, then with Neptune. So this is a really strong emotional charge, but very, very diverse. As I said, each planet and each sign will add a different nuance, a different color, a different mood, so to speak. Of course, when the moon meets with, for example, Venus retrograde and Pluto, it's going to be pretty intense because it will forces to emotionally focus on the Venus retrograde theme in our lives personally. So either love, either money, either profession, career, what we want to do with our lives or where this Capricorn energy is in your own personal chart. Then when it meets with Saturn, we are going to be rather grounded and we want to approach things very rationally with our intelligence, with our mental powers to figure stuff out. This Saturn can also represent conversation, communication and connection with more experienced people than ourselves. We may receive or give a lot of good advice. Then the moon meets with Jupiter that is hopeful, that is optimistic, mystical, a little bit of escapism, so alcohol and 420 might be a choice for a lot of people. Then, of course, on the 7th, the moon meets with Neptune. That is also going to be really, really emotionally intense and charged and rather more mystical, med meditative, sacred solitude, self-care, etc. And then the moon enters in the sign of Aries where it will meet with Chiron. So we will be guided to focus profoundly on our healing and hearing journeys. Mercury enters the sign of Aquarius, it, it is in shadow, so we are in a pre-Mercury retrograde period, yet still Mercury in Aquarius is a really really good energy, Mercury likes being in that sign, it is quick, it is ingenious, it communicates quickly, efficiently, it knows how to reach out, this is where a lot of information might come our way from friends, from acquaintances, even total strangers. This is really good for networking. This is really good for public speaking, any public communication, sharing something with the, on the internet, uh, searching for something on the internet, regardless of what that is. It's really good for socializing, for business meetings, etc., etc., Around the 5th, Neptune speaks in a conversation of harmony and sextile with, with, with this Venus retrograde. This to me says a lot of divine guidance. This is where the divine from within ourselves, through dreams or whatever we do, meditation, contemplation, etc. It helps us, it guides us. Either it calms us and comforts us to be able to be patient for this Venus retrograde to be processed, or it gives us hints and guidance, for example, to clarify what exactly is going on in our unconscious, how we're reacting to something, or what our true feelings are. And if these are changing, we might receive a lot of patience. Patience to allow ourselves time for our feelings to crystallize and of course then ask ourselves well what are we feeling of course this sextile is really really good for anything artistic anything mystical anything psychological because venus is our value system our feelings our love our attraction after all 
And in the sign of Capricorn, it's very, very down to earth. So this can be good for love and romance. To attract someone from the distant past back into our lives. Or this is where we can also meet someone fated. But things are not very clear yet in the moment of the meeting. And this Neptune can inspire intuitive senses and feelings that even though things are not clear, we might still feel a instinctual trust or attraction to that person. But of course, replace person with job, hobby or anything of Capricornian and Venusian nature and it is perfectly viable. On the 8th, Venus retrograde conjuncts the Sun and this is a really much awaited moment of this larger Venus retrograde season because the Sun adds clarity. Yes, it does combust a little bit, so it makes this Venus a little bit fiery, desperate, passionate, egotic, because ultimately that's the shadow side of the sun, yet still that gives us power, that gives us clarity, that makes us be able to trust ourselves and our judgment, and Capricorn, when we trust our judgment, when we trust our sovereignty over ourselves and everything in our lives, we can make choices, steps that much more easier and we feel more, much more confident. Whereas confidence might be a big issue under this Venus retrograde season because of the Plutonian energy and because Venus in Capricorn ultimately seeks commitment and commitment doesn't come easily before we commit to something or before we cast the final verdict on something or someone, we have to think about it over and over and over again until we are sure and certain, or at least that is what a diligent, wise and experienced person would do. But even if you make a mistake, let's say, even if you cannot embody the diligence of Capricorn and make like a really bad choice out of impulse, because that Plutonian energy is very, very seductive, so to speak. No problem, because Venus will meet this Pluto once again when she goes direct. In February or early March, if I'm not mistaken. And to end the week, we have two celestial conversations that are not very easy energies, but they do not perfect themselves this week. They go on to next week. So this is Mercury squaring Uranus. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. So this can be difficult news, complications, breakdown in communications, but as a shock. Someone tells you a shocking news or a big setback or an unexpected twist and turn of events or something that you have been initiating is suddenly blocked or stopped in its tracks. Or there is a truth coming out, which is shocking. But of course, Mercury will hold this square with Uranus three times. This is just the first. It will hold it once again when it goes retrograde. And then the final time when it goes direct and re-enters the sign of Aquarius. And the other conversation is Mars squaring Neptune. Now, this energy is really, really difficult because my personal experience as an astrologer tells me that rather than disillusioning, rather than Neptune drowning that Mars and taking away our faith, taking away our optimism, um, kicking us out from our Sagittarian vibes a little bit, this can act actually the other way around where it inspires us with false hope. And when we are full of false hope, excited, determined, so very passionate, we take some uninspired action, Mars and Sagittarius, we aim for the stars and we miss, and then we fall down, and that is when we get disillusioned. So at the very end of the week, on the 9th of January, we must make sure that we take everything with a pinch of salt, 
regardless if it's something inner or another person promises us something or we dream we have a big dream a big goal we get carried away by a big idealistic impulse regardless of where it sources from we have to take it carefully because this energy is way too good to be true so we must not allow ourselves to turn into don quixote and also be very careful with escapism alcohol drugs substances etc because there mars in the sign of sagittarius knows no limits it doesn't know when to stop it doesn't know when it's enough neptune in pisces craves and pisces is boundless so there is no limit in the craving as well and this can end up in a not so favorable way hospital pisces detox pisces in mental institution pisces so we must be careful with substances and also mars in sagittarius let's not trust blindly gurus and spiritual teachers who are BSing us a little bit so when something is way too sci-fi or way too fantastic and it rings a bell and you start getting doubts well don't dispel those doubts give pay attention give them credit because chances are someone is BSing you and finally also on the 9th the sun meets with Juno and this celestial conversation prepares us to commit it prepares us to work on the resolution or the com- big conclusion of this venus retrograde season so i've a time this around march the beginning of the march where venus has already been direct and it had its third meeting with pluto so we get a sense of clarity whatever the venus retrograde theme was in our lives it crystallizes and the sun meeting juno right now as in the 9th of january that helps us empower enforce enable our choice and whatever we we decided as i said again whatever the specific of this venus retrograde is in our own individual lives we commit to that we accept it we follow at the end of the day our hearts because that is what venus does it ignites the passion in our hearts regardless of what expression that takes because don't get me wrong pluto is the planet of transformation so it does change something and it also brings out a big truth and power and control where it is us who have to exert it a certain kind of control So if during this Venus retrograde we made the choice to forgive the ex and let them return well that is what we have to commit to and accept if we decided to leave the marriage the relationship the partnership for good and there is no choice to rekindle the flame etc because the Venus retrograde revealed to us that the love inside of our heart is dead Pluto god of death Well that is what we commit to. If it's a job change, career change or the most intense kind of expression of this energy where we meet that very sexy, charming, alluring, irresistible person who we know that is a little bit dangerous but we just cannot resist and we say yes to them. We accepted the danger so we have to live out the relationship and see where it takes us because of the multitude of the conjunctions the moon holds especially with the capricorn planets and asteroids as well and the jupiter squaring the nodes of the moon and the sun meeting venus in the sky This is going to be a very very intense start of the year when we con- when we're contemplating, we're brainstorming, we're thinking, but also working, also taking action, also disciplining ourselves, also aiming for the stars, reaching for the stars, trying to embody our greatest potential, 
also dreaming of the future that we want to experience and at the same time healing and at the same time releasing and at the same time purging. So this is a really, really intense start of the year. But chances are it doesn't really have to be doom, gloom and anxiety and all of that. Sometimes very busy in all shapes and forms and in all dimensions, emotional, mental, physical, lucrative, uh, relationship, etc. That is a really, really good thing because at least it takes our attention away from the collective fear, for, from the mass psychosis, from the self-victimization. So it, it's not that bad. So this concludes this week's horoscope. Thank you so much for listening and being here. Again, I have to mention, today is the new moon in Capricorn, trined by Uranus. So please don't forget to plan to see the intention for yourself, for the collective, for your loved ones. Especially if you know where Capricorn is in your personal chart. So that area of life. And even if you have no idea, just work with the symbolism of Capricorn. You having control authority over your life in whatever that means to you in any way shape or form so thank you again wish everyone a blessed and really really magical jupiterian week until next time bye for now